Hello, DR. Richard, it's in person. Great to do a market <laughs> moves in person. And uh, you might tell them the reason why we're doing it in yes, person. We are here and in Nashville, Tennessee at Epsilon Connect, which is Ben Hunt's conference that has been 10 years in the making. Ben Hunt has been writing Epsilon Theory and building a community, a really remarkable community um, for the past 10 years. It's actually the 10 year anniversary. And for the first time, uh, members of that community are getting together in person. Here is a chart, Richard. You said we give them some numbers that have come out. This is a Gallup poll that comes out annually. And uh, this is showing that uh, the, the number of people, the number of people investing in the stock market, uh, doing something themselves, not through, uh, you know, a, a, in any way, do they own stock? is up to 61% for the first time since 2008 that we've gotten to those levels. I remember 2008, I remember being a buyer in 2009. Mm -hmm. And I remember friends, you know, saying, I'm never getting in the stock market again. And here we are now in 2023. And uh, 15 years later, people are finally getting in back at the levels not seen since uh, before the great, whatever they call that, the great recession. The great recession, <laughs> the, great, the great financial crisis. The, so the, this is a warning sign to me. I don't know about you, but uh, it looks to me, this kind of feeds into my beliefs that uh, the public is, you know, getting drawn in uh, again. And uh, in the end, you know, um, that coupled with my ongoing concerns, which certainly have been reinforced here at this yeah. conference, um, you know, is a warning sign to me. I also heard, uh, you know, th that the bearishness among investors, I think this is from the Investors Intelligence Report, is at uh, levels not seen since early 22, right? So there's very little bearishness among retail investors right now. Everybody's expecting a rally. And uh, that's... I think giving me pause uh, and as well, it should in the new the near to intermediate term outlook. I think that's exactly right that we have gone up so far so fast. We'll look at a couple of charts about that. Yeah. But I think there's one longer term lesson here that I want to hit before we okay. go on. And that is that people who got out during the great financial crisis mm -hmm. have not gotten back in until now. 50 years later, Richard. And I think that's the, that's a, a, a maybe even a bigger message to take away from this chart. Yeah. And I know you are a big believer that you've got to have proper exposure to be able to capture like the run that we just had. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at where we are to, to, uh, um, build on what you just said about where we are in the mm -hmm. near, near to intermediate term. Mm -hmm. This chart shows that at the at the the inflection points here at the flat points where the red arrows are that the cu accumulation of equity cash money flowing into the equity market so this is just is flattened like if, out if you take each day the you know the money in and the money out and you get a a number for the day right here's the net positive or negative inflows or outflows of cash right into stocks and then you just kind of add that number up over time. This is what you get. So yeah. we are seeing here, if I may. Sure. Good. <laughs> so, I mean, this is pretty crazy. This is the pandemic, right? All the stimulus checks, et cetera, when everybody was, was out of work. Uh, you know, the inflows went from 500 to nearly 2,000. And then in early 22, they kind of flatlined. Right. So that means that there really hasn't been any net new inflows cash wise into the market since 22. Meanwhile, we've had we had a, a pretty big dip and a pretty big rally. <laughs> All <laughs> contained in that short little All flat contained. plateau. So something else is going on dynamically than just, you know, money flowing into the markets. And I think this is. uh you know, one of the things that people don't understand about the uh, the debt ceiling limit, right, is that all that time that the fight's been going on, the Treasury Department hasn't been selling debt. 
Okay. So they haven't put bonds up for sale and they were using all kinds of accounting gimmicks mm. to cover, you know, to be able to write checks out of other accounts. Okay. Oh. So now that the debt ceiling limit is passed, they've got a lot of bonds to sell mm. all the ones that they should have been selling over the past month that they haven't been selling. Plus, you know, they need to refill their coffers. Okay. So when the treasury department puts all that, uh, all those bonds up for sale, okay, cash is going to go into those bonds. And cash going into bonds means cash not going into the stock market. So this is one of the risks right now that I just don't see, besides my own personal belief that, you know, there's another shoe to drop. <laughs> and again, I always acknowledge it's my belief, right? I'm not saying it's guaranteed to happen. It's my belief. I put odds on it. You know, I'm keeping powder dry for it. I won't be all in on the market in these conditions. But this is telling me that, you know, once Treasury starts dumping bonds on the market, it's kind of like quantitative tightening, right? Mm -hmm. All that cash is going to go into buying bonds. Um, Treasury is going to be paying higher interest rates. And uh, that is going to be a drag on equities going higher. So, mm -hmm. you know, I still think we could see a little bit of, you know, what I'd call a fake breakout, um, you know, and at a minimum, I don't expect that we're off to the races in the next few months. So fascinating chart. Thanks for putting this together and uh, having it to our attention. Yeah. Having read a lot on the subject this past week, Richard, I haven't heard anybody put it as succinctly. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And to understand why things might change really quickly, that is a good, a really good way to think about it. So the last thing to th that I wanted to show folks today and have you comment on is the uh, is this uh, magenta line, this kind of pinkish line that runs up to the right corner. That is technology stocks, XLK, the XLK ETF. And this is from the beginning of the year back here since the beginning of two, two, uh, 2023. And this is the last weekend change. This is the NVIDIA spike that has taken XLK up from 25% well, to well over 30. You know, what's year. interesting to me about this too is that, so you have technology up 35%, you have uh, comm services up 30%. Now, you know, communication services, I think Google. I Google that, Google right? is, is definitely a uh, chuck. And then in there. you have discretionary up. 20% and everything else is down. Okay. And discretionary, you're like, what is that? Well, that's Amazon <laughs> and Tesla. And Tesla. Okay. So the this is the same things. story yeah. of just a few stocks carrying the market and carrying the sectors and all other sectors being down. Now, look, there's lots of studies out there. You know, I've been looking into this a lot. You know, sometimes you can have a narrow market for a little while that can then um, you know, be a catalyst for the smaller stocks actually getting liquidity and starting to take off. So we got to keep an eye out for it. We're not seeing it yet. Um, I think the narrowness of this market is a problem. And, uh, but we definitely got to keep an eye out to see if the smaller stocks start to gain some ground on the bigger stocks. That would be a positive sign. We're not seeing it yet. On the year, pretty much everything's down. Uh, with the exception of the big eight and, you know, JP Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The bit, uh, the, a couple of big banks and, uh, and all the stocks that are represented in these lines yeah. and the things that have gone down um, are everything else. I mean, this, yeah. this chart is all the, this is the, the big 11 um, sector spiders, the yeah. S and P sectors. So it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty uh, a compelling chart i want to uh, pop out of um of screen share richard and uh oh we'll talk about this real quick i threw this in here the market has been bumping up against this key 4200 area yeah. in the s p 500 and uh i think it's a i think it's a a, a warning sign that despite the fact that we've done debt ceiling settlement earlier this week, Tuesday, the market popped pre-market and then fell right off and hasn't been really able yeah. to crash through to break out. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like this back mm. here, you know, where you get a breakout to 4,400, 4,300 or so. 
uh, followed by this. <laughs> you know, again, uh, not a guarantee, but definitely a risk. So, all right, uh, let's uh, let's pop right out of here. And I just want to bring up the uh, the number that came out this morning, and right. then we can uh, then we can wrap up. We did get a big non-farm payrolls monthly employment number, as most people would think of it. Number much higher than everyone thought. Uh, 336 versus 195 yes. expected, something wow. like that. Just uh, so. just a huge breakout. So um, that, uh, you think, well, a lot more people working, that's great. But I think the pressure we're going to see coming from that is now the Fed says that having many, many more people working, making money to be able to spend is an inflationary issue. Yeah. It, so it's like good news is kind of, kind of bad for the markets because the Fed is going to um, be more likely to want to raise rates. Or definitely not cut or rates. Or not cut rates, rates. or yeah. as as quickly, yes. Yeah, so there's talk, there's still talk about a pause in June, at least there was as of yesterday. <laughs> so um, Powell seems to be inclined towards saying, hey, we've raised rates faster than any time in history. Uh, maybe we should, you know, take a break and see what happens? Mm -hmm. But now we've got this blowout jobs number. It's going to be harder to digest for Powell. And so far, though, I mean, we haven't seen a big correction in the markets. And you got to say the markets have held up pretty well, uh, better than I certainly expected. And again, you know, look, we're in the third year of a presidential yes. cycle. You know, uh, we're. You know, we're, we've entered into the sell in May and go away period, right? But two of my uh, favorite seasonals, you know, by the way, that yeah, the markets didn't do headwinds. well. I mean, yes. technology rallied, but the rest of the market hasn't yeah. really been too impressive in the season, in the seasonally bullish period, you know, kind of up to May. So look, this is a tough market, mm. right? We're at epsilon theory with 100, you know, it's financially very savvy people. Yeah, really. And everyone is uncomfortable with what's going on right now. Um, you know, some of the more remarkable things that I've seen, uh, Ben Hunt showed a chart that showed, a few charts that showed that over the past 14 years, mm -hmm. um, quality, quality equity, you know, a quality factor, a value factor, and a skill factor have all not worked. Mm. So the stock market has gone up over the past 15 years, but it's not because of quality stocks rising. It's not because of value stocks rising. And it's not because of skilled managers you know, doing well, doing well. Right. So the conclusion from that is that we're basically living in a politicized mm. market. And I've shown Ben's chart about looking at the wealth Wealth in versus the GDP. U.S. versus the you know the productivity mm -hmm. and the GDP, what we've produced versus the wealth that we have in assets, and uh, you know those two lines have been diverging for 20 years, and particularly over the last 14 years, and you know the basic consensus here is that there has to be a reckoning for that. Um, nobody knows the timing of that reckoning. Obviously, nobody expected that reckoning to you know, be 25 years in the making. <laughs> so that gives everyone pause, but there's absolute um, concern and consensus that that reckoning has to take place. And these are amongst very sophisticated financial minds, you know, like we've got a certain level of experience. There's a lot of institutional, <laughs> very serious uh, financial minds here, you know, not the least of is are Ben and Rusty themselves, right? But uh I, you know, it totally lines up with what I see. Um, Neil Howe, the author of The Fourth Turning, unfortunately couldn't make it to the conference, but uh, The Fourth Turning is a book by Neil Howe and I think William Strauss talking about, you know, there's going to be a generational crisis mm -hmm. in this, you know, period of kind of 2010 to 2030 or so. And, uh, and we're smack dab in mm -hmm. the middle of it, so.
I would think back to the thought of we've got all of these things happening. We even showed some charts that gave we're we're flatlining in, in inflow, some other things can't get through a particular resistance level. Mm -hmm. um, I think a, a sort of a, a parting shot from me, and then I'd love you to comment on it, is that does not say leap to the sidelines, but it does say have a plan, beware that that we have these unusually overbought uh, um, issues going on in the market yeah. that make us primed for a turn, for a turn to the downside. So be prepared. And uh, and have a plan, and I uh, I would I would guess that that would be uh, uh, you're not ready to jump into the bomb shelter just today, but you've got to be ready. Either you've got to have your portfolio hedged, <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, or you got to have some cash. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's about two thirds allocation to the markets, and um, and about one third in cash. And if You've been following Richard's work. I think you'll know that if you have some uh, lower and non-correlated assets in your portfolio, you can weather these kinds of potential downturns much easier, much lower stress yeah. than if you just have everything piled into the big eight uh, mega techs. Yeah. And just to quote, you know, one last thing, by cash, I mean money markets, right? Are you actually earning <laughs> Uh, significant interest on your cash right into now. in today's in today's environment that wasn't a, an option a year ago yeah. it is today yeah all right thanks for listening everybody again great to spend time with you dr and uh great to be at ben hunt's conference with all these remarkable people it's been a real joy yeah, it's been a great week and uh, enjoyed being with you. We'll have to do some more live uh, together market moves as we go forward. Richard, I look forward to that. Have a great week, everybody, or a weekend, and see you next week.